160. He's gone. What's up everybody and welcome to part three of our forge build. As you can see the forge is here at my feet. Uh, immediately I realized I made a mistake. I talked about it in the video before but I didn't actually do it and that was to slather the outside of this some sort of lubricant, motor oil, olive oil, whatever. Uh, I didn't do that and so now I'm gonna have a bit of a nightmare getting this piece of cardboard out of here. But that is our next step so that's kind of where we're going from here is I gotta pull this cardboard out. Hopefully by the end of the day we will be uh, melting some aluminum in this bad boy. Well, after a little twisting and pulling, uh, she came out pretty good. I used my, my ruler as kind of a ramrod down the sides. You can see all the marks from it. Um, the transfer paper left a little bit of a of, of shit in here, but my guess is is the first time we heat this up, all this will burn off quickly and easily. And it's cool because we have quite a large space down here. To put things in perspective, this is our six inch gap uh, stand. Then here is our monster crucible, and that fits about as perfectly as humanly possible. I'll probably end up making a smaller crucible as well. And so for that one, might use, you know, whatever, but basically got a little bit of space on the outside here so I can pick it up. Uh, and that's gonna be pretty good. Oh, the other thing we haven't done yet is, as you can see, our hole to the outside world got a little covered up. So we're gonna have to dig it out there we go there's our air hole and again all this stuff is going to burn off pretty quick this uh plaster even though it's been probably four days since i poured it is actually still kind of moist and so it's going to have to be baked in at least once uh, to get all the moisture out of it all right so next thing we gotta do is we gotta modify our crucible and you can see i marked the center line and all we're gonna do is we're gonna weld on these little pieces of rebar and they're gonna be used for our hook tool so we can lift the crucible in and out of forge without uh, having any issues. Obviously you can't just reach in there and grab it with your hand. So all I did is I took a little piece of rebar, made one inch pieces on each side, it should fit in there nice and snug. And all we're gonna do is just uh, weld the crap out of them. The next modification we gotta make is we gotta put a drain spout into this, or like a pouring spout. And because you don't want, molten metal is not something you want just kinda going all over the place. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our bandsaw here, we're gonna make a small V cut right in here. And then we're gonna use a piece of angle iron to kinda make a little snout, and that way it'll be a lot easier to pour. From the night I come alive, it's where I live, it's where I die. Here one second. Look at that, hand formed steel. I used a uh, hydraulic press to get the angle a little bit under 90 degrees, probably like 60 degrees. And then we just cut out two little notches in it. And what we're going to do is we're going to weld it on right there. Second turn around, I'm gone. Coming in hot. Coming in low. Coming in locked. Coming in loaded. Ready to rock. Ready to roll. Hammer's cocked. Coming in hot. You lay down your head and... So there's our final piece of the puzzle. And so the way you lift this crucible is you're gonna have two tools, which gonna, we're gonna make next. One's kind of a hook thing that lifts this up, and the other one is just a small hook slides in here and allows you to tip this over so you can pour it out. But with that, our crucible itself is done. There's our first uh, <coughs> rebar tool, and what this does is once you lift the crucible out, this hooks in here and allows us to tip the crucible over and pour it out. So we're gonna set that aside, and now we're gonna make our uh, hook piece. So there's our finalized lifter tool. This part down here with the curves, uh, it's actually pretty hard to do. I was able to do it, combination of brute strength, vise, and 20 ton press. If you don't have a 20 ton press, um, or brute strength, or a vise, I simply recommend making several cuts and then just welding this thing together. Honestly, if I hadn't just in my head thought like, oh fuck it, I'll just bend it, I probably would have just cut and weld all these pieces together. So let's go into the garage and see how our tools work. So let me just give you guys a quick demonstration of how our tools work, and this one's still a little hot. 
So basically you just reach down with our little grapple piece and it just hooks like that. And then that allows you to lift the crucible out. And then you have the second piece that allows you to basically pour the crucible out into our fitting tray. That's kind of what you got right there. Those are the two tools you need. Um, obviously I just made them out of two pieces of rebar, not a big deal. Um, and it allows you to basically then pick up your crucible, put it back into the forge, and you got these tools, and you're good to go. Now the next thing on our agenda is making a casting tray. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a bunch of six inch pieces of angle iron, uh, and then lay them across, so basically it's sitting like this. And we're gonna use pieces of angle iron along the sides to basically give it some structure. And that way, each one you pour, it'll make a little uh, triangular a piece of aluminum and then you just pop them out of the out of the molds when you're done so I'm gonna go ahead and mark this off cut it up and uh, we'll get to tack welding it together so quite a bit of grinding later we've got one two three four five six <clears throat> I'm sorry seven we got seven <laughs> six inch pieces and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically hold them at right angles next to each other so they're kind of sitting like this and then, uh, then we're just going to tack weld them together, and then we can make our side rails that are just going to hold everything. So there we go. So a couple of 45 degree magnets will allow us to hold our initial two pieces in place. And uh, now we're going to just go through and tack weld right up over here, and then we'll just go and do all of the other ones. Okay, well, there's our tray that we're going to use to pour our ingots. I welded the backside completely everywhere, and so that's ready to go. And I tried to keep the inside here as clean as possible so that, you know, we're going to end up with a little bit of contaminants by the first couple of pours, but hopefully not nothing too bad. So unfortunately my hinge idea didn't work, so I'm going to have to figure out something later. But uh, I really wanted to fire it up today, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to get this thing going, and I'm going to clean up. we got our bucket full of aluminum scrap right there. So I think what we're going to do is just pack it with coals, douse it with lighter fluid, and get this bitch roaring. Has come to call a pretty mug to roll. You're gonna see what thrillers, what chillers, what natural bone killers. Low down, dirty dog. All right, well, it took almost an hour or a little over an hour actually, an hour and 15 minutes to melt down all this aluminum. Uh, it easily took me 30 minutes, 35 minutes just to get up to temperature. And so now we get to play with our aluminum. So, the first thing. You gotta do, we gotta use our tools. We gotta remove our crucible. And set it down on the ground for a minute. And now inside of here, there's a lot of junk on top of the aluminum and you're gonna need a spoon and something to set it on. And you just, you gotta get every little piece out because all of this stuff is just, it's just garbage and you don't want any of that in your aluminum ingots. Oh, look at that. Our uh, ceramic plate that I was using just cracked right in half from the heat. Then, once you got everything out, we can use our tools to pour everything out into our little tray and the amount of heat rating from this thing is just massive that popping noise is the steel uh, expanding and we're going to allow that to reheat, but there's our uh, aluminum ingots, and slowly but surely. Yeah, they're gonna, they're already hard, so basically just wait a little bit and then we can just pop them out of here. So that concludes our uh, forge build. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. 
And so uh, let me let me take you around and show you kind of what we made. So this so I cut up a uh, motorcycle frame from one of the uh, parts bikes, and this is just an example that I cut uh, with the bandsaw that was just too big to fit in the crucible, so I didn't end up melting it down. But I probably melted down about a third of the frame. Uh, the big part in the front I just kind of threw out because it was too much of a pain to cut it down just for this time. But uh, total weight right here is about five pounds and ten ounces of pure aluminum ingot, and you can see it's actually really interesting because it's just, I mean, it's nothing but pure aluminum. So it's a pretty good haul. We're going to set this aside and uh, after I come up with something to mold, then we'll uh, use these aluminum ingots, melt them down, um, and cast something. So kind of lessons learned. Uh, it takes 30 to 40 minutes for this thing to get up to temperature. That seems to be pretty normal. Um, so don't throw in your aluminum and think, oh shit, it's, why is it not melting? Give it time. So I ran the, the uh, forge probably about two hours to make all this. This was basically two batches. <clears throat> and I went through almost the entire bag of charcoal. Uh, now, as far as that's concerned, um, charcoal burns pretty fast compared to real coal, which is why if you watch YouTube videos and stuff like that, you're gonna see a lot of people that recommend that you get real coal. Here in Texas, we don't really produce coal, and so I don't really know where to get it, and ordering it online is prohibitively expensive because I can get a bag of charcoal for about $5 uh, and five bucks to melt down. I could have melted down a lot more aluminum. I just ran out of pieces to melt down. Um, so it's definitely one of those things where you want to gather up all your uh, kind of raw materials ahead of time and, and so you can do everything efficiently. Um, I bought this at Walmart for $10. It is... A Revlon 1800 watt um, hair dryer. Um, our pipe was long enough, and the cool thing was the pipe that I used is an exhaust pipe, so it was flared. So this actually seated in there perfectly. It was exactly the right diameter. Um, and there's a there's a few little melted spots around the edges, but uh, our um, hair dryer here doesn't seem to be any worse for wear. So I'm not I'm not super duper worried about that. Uh, so this thing will last us for quite a while, I think. Um, so now I'm going to switch over to the GoPro, I'm going to take you guys in there and show you uh, kind of what the forge looks like now that it's had a little bit of time to cool down. So this has been kind of out here for probably about 45 minutes with, with no blower, no nothing on it. Um, and there is still quite a bit of heat radiating from it. So let's just set this down gently, take a look. So. This right here is just a sacrificial spoon. You can see there's still shit on it. This tray worked pretty well. Uh, it's kind of annoying because stuff gets kind of jammed in here and then you gotta wedge it out. But other than that, uh, the tray worked fine. Our uh, pouring tools worked really well too. I was really happy with the way that turned out. So if we grab this and bring it over here and set it down, Um, this thing is still fucking radioactively hot right now, but you can see there's, uh, there's some, there's some scrappy materials. Oh yeah, you don't want to touch that. That was a bad idea. Um, but that's just probably like, it's like homemade aluminum foil right there. Our, um, let's see. Yeah, there's just like a bunch of shit melted down here. Uh, that was clearly not aluminum. I don't know, I might uh, go over this with like a wire wheel or something afterwards just to clean it up a little bit. But as far as I'm concerned, our crucible performed exactly as I uh, hoped it would. So now let's take a look kind of inside of the forge itself. So this is still radiating a fuck ton of heat. Um, and you can see there's there's cracks uh, from the heat down the sides of the wall, but to be honest with you, it I mean it looks like it's maybe separated a little bit from you know heating and cooling, but you know it's not something you know it's cheap plaster of Paris. So if it lasts me, you know a while, I'll be pretty happy. I don't think it's going to crumble and fall apart. But worst case scenario, you can go in there with like a chisel or something break all of it out, you know, drop in a new mold and just start all over. Now, on this part, there was like a whole separate layer on top 
that basically chipped and fell away and I think that was because I basically added it kind of last minute after this base had already hardened a little bit but this part using the rebar it looks uh, like it's pretty well made let me go ahead and drop you guys down upside down in there just to see you know give you a kind of a better idea so I'm gonna let this thing cool off uh, I don't know overnight maybe or whatever uh, I gotta go run some errands when we come back and we'll see how hot it is but eventually I just go in there and uh, just tip it on its side and knock all the uh, ash and soot and stuff out and it'll be fine it doesn't require a whole ton of maintenance so there you have it we built a home forge melted down a bunch of aluminum uh, made some really cool ingots and now we got to come up with some cool projects to uh, use these ingots on make sure you follow me on maxworks.com uh, Instagram, Maxworks, Facebook, backslash Maxworks. You can see pictures of all this kind of stuff long before the videos come out. Uh, if you like the video, hit that like button. Uh, if you're new here, please subscribe. And let's keep making metal stuff.